that are major agricultural pests that has a smell that some describe as a strong cilantro smell. They will get into your house using any nooks and crannies that they can find, and once inside, or pretty much anywhere really, the female can lay up to 400 eggs in her lifetime. The Swedish refer to them as barfisar, which translates directly to berry farts, and their scientific name is Haliomorpha halis. That's right, you guessed it, today we're going to be talking about the stink bug. Welcome to Neuro Junction. There are many types of stink bug and many types of shield bug, but today we'll be talking about a very specific one called the, and the most common in my understanding, the brown marmorated stink bug. They are recognizable by their brown shield-like bodies, spindly legs, six of them, and uh, white spots about three quarters of the way up each antenna. That differentiates them from most other stink bugs and shield bugs. On average, they grow to be about a half an inch long, and as I mentioned before, they've got six legs and three body segments. I mentioned some similar species. There are a lot of shield bugs, um, but the most similar looking ones are the Brachymania, the Euschistus, the... I have to read this one. The Aerosternum and the Podiasis. The brown marmorated stink bug is native to China, Japan, and Taiwan, but they've been reported all over Asia as well as many parts of Europe and most of the United States, even some parts of Canada. It is believed that they came to America via shipping crate or maybe over a boat or something of some sort, probably on a boat of some sort. Um, and they were first reported in Allentown, Pennsylvania in 1998 and have spread quickly since then. Let's talk about misconceptions. Many people believe that stink bugs can bite. At least for the brown marmorated stink bug, as far as our research confirms, it is not possible for stink bugs to bite you. Um, an entomologist interviewed by a news website, WSET, his name's Jonathan Arnold, uh, and he said that they don't even have the mouth parts to bite. They're not even capable of penetrating human skin. They can penetrate fruits and tomatoes and stuff, but not capable of penetrating the human skin. One possible reason that people might believe that stink bugs bite is the two chemicals that create their scent actually have the possibility of causing an allergic reaction with human skin, and it's released from the underside of their, of their abdomens, which means that when they land on you, they've got their spindly legs with the little hooks on the end that could feel like they're biting you or scratching you, and it, but at least stirs up some you know, raw skin a little bit, even in the micro scale. Um, and then they might release just a little bit of the two chemicals that creates their smell, and it can cause red welts um, and irritation where they landed. So it's entirely possible that that is what's happening when people say that they've definitely been bitten by stink bugs. Another common belief is that squishing a stink bug will cause more stink bugs to come to the same area. According to Rutgers University, this is not true. The scent that is created when they are squished is trans decinal and trans to octanel, and those are not the same scents that are created when stink bugs are trying to attract other stink bugs. So they actually create two different smells, and the, the aggregation hormone, pheromone that they create is not created when they are squished, and not released when they are squished. Let's talk predators. The stink bugs have several natural predators that experts are hoping will mitigate and stop their spread a little bit. Um, one of the major ones is the wheel bug. It is a slightly larger looking bug of the same style of, as stink bugs. It's, it will bite you, so be careful about the wheel bug. It's longer. Um, but it also goes after both the stink bug itself as well as the stink bug's egg. There are also some species of spiders and wasps that enjoy the brown marmorated stink bug as a snack. Uh, scientists are even looking into the possibility of introducing a parasitic wasp into the U.S. ecosystem to try to get, to try to eliminate or at least lessen the spread of the stink bug. Scientists also hope that birds will begin preying on stink bugs as they become more prominent and other bugs might become less easy prey. To get rid of stink bugs, there are many possibilities. You can squish them. Um, some people suck them up in the vacuum. This has some negative down, or like some downsides that, you know, 
and your vacuum stinks, you still have a bunch of weird bugs in your vacuum. I mean, it's possible and they're not deal killers, but your vacuum could end up smelling like a stink bug. Um, one way I've found effective is to have a glass bottle, like a little tea bottle of some sort, um, with a little bit of rubbing alcohol on the bottom, about that much. And when you find a stink bug, you just go up to them and you put the bottle underneath them and then knock them into it and they will fall down in and the alcohol, let's just say, doesn't agree with them. <laughs> Another possible trap that I've heard of and I've seen used is a uh, you take a two liter bottle you know, and you cut it in half about two thirds of the way up so that just like the conical portion at the top is free, you turn it over and then you tape it in and stink bugs will fly down onto it and land in it and then they can't get back out because of the curvature of the bottle and they'll slide down into the bottle and die. Well, I hope you learned something. If you liked this video and you like the information in it, please share it with your friends. Uh, for more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up, please. Just trying to start this channel out, so if you want more information like this or have any questions about anything else you'd like covered as a topic, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.